Welcome back to our series of screencasts on cases. This one, and I knew you'd be excited, is about the nominative case. Let's see what we can remember about this. First of all, let's have another look at the forms of the, a, and possessives in the nominative case. Here they are. You should be familiar with this table. So we have the forms of the, dear, di, das, and di, a, ein, einer, ein, and the examples of our possessives, my and your, main, meiner, main, meiner, dein, deiner, dein, deiner. And as you'll hopefully recall from our introduction, all the possessive adjectives follow this pattern. So his and our and their. Have a look back at the introduction if you need reminding about those. Okay, so they're the forms. How do we know where in a sentence to use them? Well, as you might recall, the nominative case is used with subjects in German sentences. Look at some examples. The first one, der Lehrer hat eine Katze. So we have to figure out who or what is the subject of this sentence. And to do that, we have to ask the question, who or what is doing the action of the verb? So where is the verb? The verb in this sentence is hat, has. Who or what's doing the having? In this case, der Lehrer. So der Lehrer, the teacher, is the subject of the sentence. What about the second example? Meine Freundin singt ein Lied. My friend sings a song. What's the action here? Singt is our verb. So who or what is doing the singing in this sentence? Meine Freundin. So she is the subject. She is doing the action of the verb, so she's the subject and in the nominative case. Our third example, ein Pferd geht nicht shoppen. A horse does not go shopping. What a shame. So what's our action here? Geht is our conjugated verb. So who or what is doing the action of this verb? Clearly, ein Pferd. So the horse is the subject and therefore in the nominative case. In each of these examples, the subject is first in the sentence. Now, of course, German sentences are more complex than this as they are in English. So let's have a look what happens and how we can keep identifying the subject in more complex sentences. And don't forget, that's always the question, who or what is doing the action of the verb? Okay, now, Wann kommt Papa nach Hause? The first question says. When is Papa or Dad coming home? So the action word here is kommt. So who or what is doing the coming? In this case, Papa. So he is the subject and in the nominative. In the second example, we have a time phrase starting the sentence. Jeden Tag liest meine Freundin ein Buch. Every day, my friend reads a book. So what's the action? Least reads. And who or what's doing that reading? In this case, meine Freundin. So she's the subject and in the nominative case. Now the second, uh, the third example rather, has two clauses, so two parts to the sentence. And that's going to mean two verbs and two subjects. So let's find the verbs first. Wenn das Mädchen ins Kino geht, sieht es Abenteuerfilme. When the girl goes to the movies, she sees adventure films. Okay, so the first verb in the first clause is geht, goes. In the second clause, it's sieht, sees. So they're the action words. Who or what's doing the going to find the subject of the first clause? Das Mädchen. So she's the subject and in the nominative. In the second, S is doing the scene, so it's the subject. So, same questions, same result. That's how we figure out when to use the nominative case. Good luck with it, and don't forget to get your head around learning those forms. Bye for now.